today I'm standing um, by the grave of my, little, of my younger brother, Donald, Donald Keane, um, suicided in 2003 in um, Canning Vale Prison, 18 years old. Donald's life wasn't a very good life. He was in and out of care most of his life, moved to many different families. Um, yeah, and yeah, really, really sad and tragic um, life Donald, Donald had and a short life, a short life where um, we um, ended up taking his life because of all the issues around him and what he had gone through during his short life. He had his full life in front of him. He was a pleasant young fellow, loved by all his all of his friends and a lot of the, a lot of our community, our Noongar community, um, all the young fellows and that. A lot of the people that he grew up with, all um, all, all adored Donald, and he touched touched the art and the lives of many of our our, our mob. Fifteen years later, we still feel the um, he, uh, you know the heartache and the sorrow that that of losing um, Donald. Um, being so young, only 18 years old, it is, you know, it's, it hasn't gone away. The pain and the suffering has not gone away for the, for the family. And, you know, we've lost someone very important in our life. He was the youngest brother of 12, uh, 12 children, six sisters and six brothers. He'd never seen no lot, real life. He never grew up. He just turned an adult and his life ended. Um, and, yeah, never got to... Not to never got to um, see see what what he had had, uh, had the opportunities that would have came available to him um, in in future and you know his life may have been grim at the time and he might have been in dark, in a dark place and that um, to contemplate um, taking his own life but um, you know um, if only if only he would have stayed around things could have changed could well easily have changed. Um, Donald never got that opportunity um, because he um, seen um, death as an exit from, from this world that he was living in. A message that I do, I do want to put out there um, for any of the young ones and that, um, that are in, the, in, in these dark, dark spaces and places in their lives, that, um, that, that darkness is today and the light can be tomorrow, you know. Um, you know, just don't, don't, give, don't give up, don't give in. It's something that we never get over, the pain and suffering and, and the heartache and, you know, the loss of a life, a young life. And probably the biggest message I want to get across to all the young ones and that, to stay, stay, stay strong, stay strong and don't, 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 don't let um, leaving this world be um, an exit plan because um, your family and all, everyone around you um, need you with us and in our lives and you know we need to see you grow up and for you to have children and for your parents and that to have grandchildren um, and your life your life is treasured and valued valued within our community um, you know our, our people might not families and that might not show love and talk love every day to you but inside everyone loves you and you know you's, your your journey you're not alone on your journey. If you ever get into these dark places and uh, spaces in your life, don't be afraid to come and talk and you know have that yarn and conversation with it, with your family and people that you can that you feel you are safe with and can look up to and explain whatever it is that's bothering and tormenting you in the mind and you know um, ease that pain through talk and don't keep it within because that. That silence you keep within is um, what drives a lot of our mob to suicide and especially our young ones. You know, um, within our mob, the, the care and the share mentality and the care factor uh, within our communities, we all care and we all love you. And, you know, don't see a, um, suicide as an exit point because your pain, your pain and suffering is only, only being transferred to your family. And, you know, like I said, 15 years later, um, his suffering is hurt me and continues to hurt me 15 years later and you know it's transferring your pain into someone else's and especially your loved ones that you know love you and care for you and are always there for you no matter what. When I hear the word suicide um, it's it's daunting it's 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 you know it's very very daunting 
um, because of the experience that we, I've had through suicide of losing um, Donald. And when I, I don't want to, I don't like hearing suicide, the word suicide in our community amongst any of our people, because even with, though, though you may, may not be family, um, the loss of any of our young people in our community has the impact and effect upon us all. And, you know, we all go through that grieving process and for the loss of, you, of one's life, no matter what family they come from, the effect um, trickles down on the whole community and, you know, um, it hurts us all. And um, especially, but especially your family and your little brothers and your sisters and for those that may have children, um, you know, um, um, to comprehend and understand suicide, our families don't do it too easy, because it's not a way of not, not a way of um, death within our culture, and it's an introduced um, sickness handed down to us from um, um, settlers, and um, we do not want any of our young ones and our people to see suicide as an exit from this world. We know it is tough; the living is tough for all our people. But you know, stay strong and um, come to the community and come to your people and talk. If you're ever feeling, um, if you're ever feeling down that much, where you may be thinking about hurting yourself or self-harming yourself, come and talk. We are here to listen.